Back to our phone lines where Vicki is on line four. Hi, Vicki. How are you this afternoon? Hi, uh, Cliff. This is Vicki from the Down River, River Rouge area. Yes. How are you? Okay. How are you doing? I like to say two things. First of all, if you check your records between 1922 and 1967, River Rouge and Ecourse on Biblical Road was the most populated African American community that you ever wanted to live in. On Bigger, we had every kind of business. I would suggest any African American who is looking for a place to start his business, come back to Red Blues, come back to E-Course and see if we don't support you. We will. That's the first thing. Second thing, Cliff, I want you to know I've been to Idlewild several times. Uh-oh. Now, if you want to go to Idlewild, you let me know because we are on our way. We from River Rouge have got about 10 or 12 people so far that want to go to Idaho. Guess what they have? A jazz weekend, gospel weekend, blues weekend, and the most magnificent people that you ever want to come in contact with. I won't mention names because I don't know if they want me to say their names on the radio. But at the same time, when you get there, I will help you to lead the people who will take you all around either while you won't miss a thing. So let me know. I'll stay in touch with you. And uh, we, we're going to either while. All right. Now, you know how to get in touch with me, don't you, Vicki? Well, I got this number, but, you know, if you have a number. No, let's, let's, let's do better than that. When, when, when you get off now, I'm gonna, we're going to put you on hold. We're not going to hang up. Okay. I'm going to ask my friend, Jawan to take your number, if you don't mind giving it to me. Oh, I do. I'll call you. I'll give you my number. We'll stay in touch. Because I definitely am planning to take that trip to uh, Idlewild, to the Jim Crow Museum at Ferris State, uh, to Macosta County, to Lake County, a number of uh, venues in that part of the state that have a significant black history. And I don't, I'm not going until I talk to you. You know what? And you can't miss with me, okay? I will make sure that you have the best time. I will make sure that you have the best time, okay? I have no doubt. Thank you so much. Don't hang up now, Vicky. We're gonna okay, put you on hold. We're gonna put you on hold. And my friend Juwan is gonna get your number. And uh, before we take our, our next caller, yes, Michael and Hotep, mm-hmm. um, is it a possibility that during these midterm elections that Trump his bombast, his remarks, his racism will indeed create a, uh, a possible change in the balance of power in Congress. Oh, I think Everybody he, keeps I talking think about going to have a huge blue wave. Uh, we already know that 29 uh, Republican members of the House of Representatives have announced that they're not uh, seeking re-election. And uh, Democrats need to take 24 seats to uh, take back control of the House of Representatives. You have a lot of millennials who are uh, running as candidates also. There's a, there's, a, there's a whole new enthusiasm around uh, running for office, uh, and people are realizing how important midterm elections are, how important the House of Representatives especially, and, and, and the U.S. Senate are as well. So I think you're gonna, I think you're gonna see, you may have some records set, but I think you're gonna see a huge wave of people really focusing on the midterm elections and voting in midterm elections also. All right. Um, one other question after that, because a lot of folks are placing their hopes in a, a change to, dem, to, to Democrats in Congress. Do Democrats really make that much difference? A change to Democrats, how? What do you mean? Uh, instead of having Republicans in these congressional and Senate seats, having Democrats, so oh, they really make significant changes. Oh, well, Dem- uh, it, it makes a difference because, one, you can block a lot of initiatives that Trump is doing, one. If you look at the policies that are being that are taking place, and uh, Washington Post has reporting on this, uh, how Trump is reversing Obama's legacy. There's been over 100 policy reversals. Two, anything that you, any legislation you want to get passed on the national level, it has to go through the House of Representatives in the U.S. Okay. Uh, now Trump can block it, he can veto it. It then has to be uh, the, the, the Congress can override it by a two-thirds supermajority vote. Okay, probably won't have a supermajority vote in the Senate, but the goal is to take back the White House in 2020. Okay, the goal so so the midterm elections are that first step, but you can block a lot of the initiatives that Trump is doing by taking back control of the House and the Senate. All right, let's get right back to our phone lines and our next caller, I believe. Yes, William on line three. Hey, William, thanks for calling. You're on with Michael and Hotep and Cliff Russell. Yes, uh, hi, hi to both of you. Hey, you know, Cliff, I've been. Uh, 
doing some research as much as I can to try and be proactive on the new tax uh, law that was signed by Trump. Mm -hmm. And I've been disseminating that information to many organizations and individuals trying to be proactive because we're always getting the we're never at the situation where we can be we can do things up front. We wait until next year when we file our taxes and we come to find out, oh my God. <laughs> and in that connection, uh, I've given a lot of research. Uh, in terms of the law, because they, they're very quiet about it. They don't want to let you know about it. Right? I'm sure. <laughs> it's it's, it's, a, it's a, a money grab by the wealthy. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So what has happened is uh, recognizing that corporate America and businesses are going to benefit. I have been reading uh, Downsizing the Federal Government by Chris Edwards, the book supported by the Cato Institute of the Koch Brothers. Mm -hmm. And what I'm worried about is because I come from the lower economic class, tried to work myself up through the system. What I'm worried about is that they're going to use downsizing, they're going to try and cut social programs they call entitlements to pay for this corporate tax cut, corporate partnerships, individuals, yeah. mass corporations, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. They're going to cut social programs to pay for it. Exactly. And a exactly. lot of people are going to suffer. Well, and here's what they did. They passed the bill knowing that it would be a $1.5 trillion deficit, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Because they right. didn't want to put the cuts in up front because folks have been even more outraged than they are now. So they said, well, hey, right. we'll deal with that later. And already right. I'm hearing overtures from the Republicans about cutting Medicare or Medicaid. Right. And right. cutting other social programs. Exactly. And that's why these midterm elections are so important. Mm -hmm. Like it was saying, to prevent, you know, we're coming down the road, but then we, our, our people will look I don't know how we can get our people acclimated and informed. Well, I, I think you've done a great job so right. far, William, in helping folks, and I appreciate you. Any other comments you have on that, Michael and Mota? Well, we need to keep doing what we do, and we need to get this information uh, out to our people. We need to talk about these news stories uh, as well because uh, politics impacts every aspect of our life, okay? I know we're coming up on a break shortly, so 